gentlemen welcome back to your shop the nice little project is a mud board now i first saw this uh being used by pipeline welders to keep themselves out of the muck and dirt when working on pipes in shuttles on pipelines so i thought you know what if you are working outside field service of any kind mechanic welder uh fitter whatever uh, this is something you've got to have uh, i tend to try and uh, look out for what the uh the pros are doing. Uh, I'm not a pro myself, not by a long shot. So, uh, but nonetheless, if, if they've got something that makes their life easier, then definitely it'll make my life easier as well. So we're using a select Maranti grade wood, uh, five pieces of one, 200 and four pieces of 445 millimeters. That's just how it worked out uh, with the material that I had on hand. I'm using select boards, uh, just makes the, um, milling and getting everything square and straight much easier uh, saves a bit of time uh, you do pay a premium but i think at the end of the time it, at the end of the day if you well your own time your own time but uh, if you're working for someone it definitely pays back so uh putting some uh scrap pl plywood underneath just to make sure we don't mar and put dents and stuff into our boards uh, i forgot to cut two of them so i'm just cutting the last two over there Making sure that you cut on the right side of the line, uh, especially if sometimes you're using the one end and sometimes you're using the other end as your as your workpiece. Then squaring off all the edges, making sure everything's uh, done and in place. Marking out the edges. Now over here I'm just marking out the screw holes, uh, hole spacing 20 millimeters from the edge and 15 millimeters from the long side on this board. Uh, and then... Uh, You'll see I first added 20 and 20 and then I decided 15 and 15 is going to be better. Uh, moving the screws as far apart as I can without going too close to the edge. Now over here I'm just using a can of penetrating spray to round off the four corners and then transferring all the holes um, to all of the boards. Uh, I try to get into a rhythm of, of uh, with things, so doing sort of production line, batching pieces of the job and uh, just makes it easier at the end of the day and uh, making sure that you do not miss something because if you're into a rhythm with something and you see something's going different then you're missing something uh, battling to get the math out of my head and making sure that we mark out all the boards so uh, you'll see me burn the first 100 millimeters or four inches of the of the rule and then working from there it just gives you a bit of a more accurate reading now normally i would use a wooden pencil but i haven't got one yet uh, so i'm using a mechanical pencil i don't like using a mechanical pencil on wood because it tends to scribe into the wood rather than make a mark on the wood and uh, then you sand your ass off getting all the scribe marks out instead of just sanding off the pencil marks so uh, when using a mechanical pencil on wood make sure that you are absolutely using light light strokes on on, on your pencil and not pressing down anything, you will you will regret it when it comes to sanding. Okay, so the whole spacing. Uh, what I normally do is I work from edges, so I'm not entirely sure what the center sections are typically. Just uh, working from the edges and uh, getting into a rhythm. Then back to the drill press with a countersink drill bit, uh, drilling all the boards. I haven't got a drill stop on yet. Uh, but you get very close when you get into the rhythm of it and making sure that we've got everything on there. Five uh, holes on the corners or well edges and four in the middle, which is uh, probably a massive, massive overkill, but it's mine. So I don't care. Screws are cheap and I don't want this thing going to shit in the middle of a job. So I have to fight with that as well. Uh, you don't know. You don't, you're fighting, you're fighting the elements more than enough. You don't have to fight there. Your tools as well. Uh, and uh, I'm saying, talking about production line and batching stuff, and I still missed one board. Well, one connection on one board, and I had to go back and do it. Now, we are wanted some uh, handles or holes in there where you can stick your band in, even when gloved. Uh, again, I haven't got a size on it, just uh, spacing a uh, polish can off of it, some wood polish, and then onto the bandsaw, cutting out the corners. I should have actually put a 
uh, thinner, well, what can we call it, narrower blade on here. I battled to get around this corner, but it still worked out fine. It was not bad at all. Just had to transfer the hole to the other side because the long boards doesn't fit into my band. So got a small little, I think it's a craftsman or something, or something like that. Very small saw, but uh, more than enough for the work, work that I do in the shop. And there we go. So now we've got the rotor in there. Uh, what I, firstly, what I'm going to do is I set up the rotor with a uh, straight cut bit so that we can smooth out the hand molds where your hand pockets are. Uh, nothing funny about it, I just winged it by hand. Uh, got a good straight edge on it. Make, just make sure that you run on the right side and uh, cutting in the right direction, otherwise the board will kick or grab or whatever and you will make a massive ash out of it. And just go slow. If you think you're going slow enough, go a bit slower. You will end up not remaking a board. Always time to remake it the second time. Okay, so once that's done, the corners get edged off uh, and smoothed off in the uh, little belt sander. Look, this little belt sander, I can't remember the size. It's a one inch by, I think, uh, I can't remember. Um, I'll have to look it up. But this is probably the, one of the most used power tools in my shop. And uh, I've had it for about probably between eight and ten years now. And I must be honest with you, uh, if that thing packs up now, I will go to the shop tomorrow morning and get a new one. This is an absolute must-have in my opinion. Uh, paid Back then I paid decent money for it. They've gotten uh, fairly expensive, but still definitely worth it. I've got more than my money's worth out of that little machine. I'll maybe do a, uh, a little review on it one day. If, you, if you'd like a review on the, on the little belt sander, let me know in the little thing below. And uh, we'll make it work for you. Over here we're transferring all of the board crossings, all of the joints uh, onto the underside of the board. We need to, uh, I want to, I want it to round off the edges on the underside of the board as well, but I don't want to run it through on the joints because then you've got that little uh, half moon in the joint that, that always gets stuff caught in and it just doesn't look nice for me. So uh, what we'll do is we will uh, put in the corner rounding bit again making sure everything's lined up and then you will see I do not go right onto the edge of the boards or do I? On this, this is the top side, sorry, this is the top side uh, getting the whole top side rounded off you'll see once we flip it up to the underside uh, we will stop short on the joints guys as always please wear your PPE, make sure you, they've got, only got one pair of eyes and ears and fingers and whatever. Uh, make sure you wear your PPE. You'll see me wearing my earplugs and uh, safety glasses. Um, earplugs. I've got a pair of uh, custom-made earplugs. Definitely worth the money. I got them as a gift, actually. and uh, But still definitely worth the money. I think I paid about $50 for it. Or the guy who gave it to who sponsored me paid about 50 bucks for it. So uh, definitely worth it. Look after yourself and uh, make sure that we can go back to your shop tomorrow or evening. And yeah, on yeah, we are working on the unders underside of the board. You'll see me stopping short on all the joints. Uh, this took a bit of time. I mashed up one of them. Uh, nonetheless, not not that bad. Uh, still, it's mine. It's not something that I'll give to someone else. Uh, if I had to build it for someone else, I'd probably re remake that old board. So uh, always look out for it and make sure that you concentrate on what you're doing. Just clamping down the boards, making sure they do not run off the edge of the table. As you can see, me stopping the, the cut short. That's where the cross, cross pieces will come on. This took a fair bit of time uh, compared to just running running the straight lines.
once again trying to batch it and make sure we don't miss anything and once that's done uh, start sanding I'm using my random orbital sander I think there's 220 grit paper on there now um, this is where you, when you when you scribe a, uh, a line too deep with your pencil this is where you'll know but trying to get that sanded out is always a major major ball like so uh, make sure you do not scratch too deep into the wood you'll see me marking each uh, each board under one of the joints so uh, we'll be st uh, once we start gluing the boards together you won't see that numbering but I still want to keep them in sequence to what I decided at the beginning of the project I want this boards to be lined up at There, I just drilled the one that I missed. Now transferring the round corners to the uh, and bottom edge, bottom pieces. What do you call that? Cross pieces. Using the little counting drill, but just to make a little hole. Transferring the four corners. Uh, what you what I did was on this job. I wanted to get the corners straight up and square before we start with the rest of the boards. Otherwise, if you work from one end to the other end uh, without squaring it up initially, your fault just keeps on creeping on you. So uh, that's why I go from one corner to the opposite corners and making sure our four initial four corners are square, and then we do not run into trouble further down the line. We've got an issue, especially on, on large areas like decking and that. Uh, if you ash it up at one stage, your, your fault just creeps up on you and just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So over here I'm just uh, look, taking the tape measure, looking diagonally if the corners of the well, the diagonal lengths are same distance. And uh, that makes that, that that will ensure that your board is that square or your frame is square okay right now we can start gluing this whole thing together i'm using normal cold glue uh, clamping first to make sure the boards are well connected and then running the screws with the uh, air screwdriver uh, a lot of people have asked me previously why do i use the air tools and not a cordless battery powered well i've got the air in the shop and uh, if I forget to plug in my compressor, it's uh, two and a half minutes before I can work again. If I forget to plug in the battery of the battery operated uh, tools, then uh, you're pretty much you're pretty much stuck for the rest of the evening using a hand screwdriver. So uh, I've got no issue. And and on top of that, once you've got the compressor, the comp uh, air compressor is the most expensive, uh, most expensive part. Once you get uh, the you once that you've got the compressor you will actually be surprised how cheap air tools is compared to the rest um, i can buy a lot of air tools for the same money um, than you would spend on battery or quarter stuff so uh, to me it works out i use the chinese import stuff they're cheap enough to chuck when they uh, stop working and they've reached the end of their life but i must be honest with you on air tools if you look after them oil them every now and then uh, they tend to last very very long that uh, the drill and the screwdriver I'm using here I've probably had for four years now and uh, without missing a beat um, the nice thing is you, you you won't burn an armature or something on it if you manhandle it it just seizes up and stops working and once you ease off on the pressure it starts running again so uh, it's not something that's electrical that you will fry the smoke out of it like that sort of thing um, as we're putting this together make sure that you wipe off all the glue I use a wet rag on the normal cold glue make sure that you wipe off everything otherwise it shows in the uh, once you start finishing as the frame becomes get, gets so uh, let me rephrase that as the frame starts to get structured it, it gets more solid and you can actually work faster getting that first couple of corners square that's a major thing once you're at this point 
you can just gun it. Uh, everything will stay square, especially with the amount of screws that I've got in here. Now we start uh, fitting the center boards. You'll see me using scraps of the wood that we cut out the half moons out of. Uh, the boards are 20 millimeters thick, so uh, using them as a spacer, you get a nice 20 millimeter spacing on it. Pilot like drilling all the wells, making sure you don't get cracks anywhere. Getting the corners done and then just gunning it from there. Making sure that all the screws are countersunk properly. Getting all the uh, excess wood glue off. Always remember to do the underside. Uh, I tend to forget that. And then I'm sitting with shit afterwards, trying to chis chisel it off. Then we're moving to the other side. The reason for it is uh, the spacing was actually a bit weird for the 445 and I think the boards are 68 wide. So it came out to a weird um, spacing. So I said 20 millimeters on the outsides and then I just sent to the center board. So that's why I jumped from the one edge to the other edge and not have it creep up on me uh, like I previously mentioned. Here we go, this project is taking shape now. I am happy with how it's come out, but at this stage, once again, making sure that we've got all the glue off. And now we can just center the uh, center board. Taking the one corner, and there you can see me just splitting the difference. Uh, it's actually, I think it's about three millimeters, the gap's about three millimeters bigger on the center board than on the sides. But that's no big one. Uh, doesn't matter to me. It still looks, came out very, very nice. I am very pleased with how this project came out. I should have done this a, a long time ago. And there we go. Now everything's in and done. Wiping off the last glue. Making sure everything's nice and neat. Sometimes of wood, if you use a, a wet rag to wipe off the glue, you will have to do a little bit of sanding afterwards. Um, and in this case, it wasn't really necessary. And once again, it's not a piece of bespoke furniture, so not that worried about it. There is a corner that I missed. Just making sure we've got everything done now. And now we're changing over to a uh, flush drum bit. I think it, what do you call it? One that cuts to whatever you've got there. There we go, flush drip. And making sure that we've got all the edges trimmed flush, making sure there's no sharp edges and corners. Maybe I hashed up it a little, I uh, hashed it up a little bit, but it's okay, uh, it'll work still. And then going back to the corner rounding bit and rounding off all the edges on the bottom. Once that's done, we can start with the finish. What I'm using is a Woodock 10, uh, they call it an interior finish. It's a poly wax sealer. Uh, I've been using this stuff for years and years and years and every time I've used something else I just keep coming back to this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, they don't pay me to say this. The amount of money I've spent on this finish is actually ridiculous because that's basically the only finish that I use. I don't think it'll work for outside applications, you know, I've weather applications like decking and so forth, but it'll definitely weatherproof this board. Uh, to the point where if we've had it in the mud, when we've had it in the mud, you'd, you'd be able to use a garden hose and wash it off. Making sure that we get uh, the finish into all the nooks and crannies, all the corners, all the screw holes. I actually fill up the screw holes with, uh, with finish on all the uh, coats. I put on four coats on this one. Uh, just to make sure that um, there's no water ingress once we get to a point where we start using it. I don't want this thing to uh, collapse on me. Uh, you, f you fight with the kit enough, uh, no need to fight with your tools as well. Uh, but I can definitely recommend this Wood Octane Poly Wax Sealer. Great product.
Sorry for the parrot in the background, it's this time of the evening where he just puts up a massive racket. Now this stuff uh, really penetrates into the wood. You'll see me just painting and painting and painting and it looks like I'm being off of my head. Uh, you keep on painting until you get a gloss, a semi-gloss finish for a couple of minutes. You'll see as it penetrates, starting off uh, and it penetrates, it, it just goes dull very quickly and you just keep on painting, making sure that you absolutely soak it into the wood. Now, this is the bottom side now. Next day, uh, I'd say at least 12 hours between coats. Um, just making sure that you get a decent and coat on it and getting it fairly dry and uh, otherwise you'll get some weird fingerprints and stuff on there. Once again making sure we get into all the corners, making sure we keep on painting till we keep seeing that gloss finish on there. There we go, four coats at the end of the day, uh, making sure, another thing, make sure that the, all your drip, little drip uh, beads on the bottom gets taken off. Really put in effort on the on the finish because I want this to, to stay in a, in a good shape for quite a long time. I mean, this is going to be under tractors, under trucks, in the mud, in the dirt, in the rain, wherever. Um, so put some effort in and, and it'll look after you. Christ, how long does this, did this take? Like I said, four coats at the end of the day, cleaning up again, making sure everything's tight. Here we go. And now we will be putting in with some of these uh, rubber door bumpers, I don't know what you call it. Um, what is they? I think they're called the door stops, door bumpers, funny little rubber thingies. There we go. Uh, you'll see me putting some fi uh, some of the finish into the hole as well, just sealing it up after we've drilled it, just making sure no water gets in there. Then transferring it to the edges as well. Um, I put these bumpers on all sides. And on the well, let's let's first get to the center portions. The center cross beams, I just put one in the middle, uh, just so it doesn't bow out on you. Uh, and mostly, you'd be using this on on weird surfaces in any case. But the reason for putting it on all the corners is now you can have the board standing flat, like you'd use it normally as a underneath stuff, and you can make it stand up on its edge in the workshop between cupboards and on its flat side in the back of the truck standing up. And uh, there we go. Gents, there we are, done, came out wonderful. Build yourself one of these, you will definitely, I've used mine quite a bit now. Um, before I made this video, uh, working on my truck, working on my trailers and so on. Uh, absolutely wonderful. As always, uh, thanks a lot and stay safe.